Hello and welcome to this AutoVista Group video. I'm Daily Brief journalist Tom Gayus. I'm taking a dive into the world of head-up displays with Italia CEO and co-founder Mike Duran. Let's jump straight in. Mike Duran, uh, Altia CEO and co-founder, thank you so much for joining us today. I think it's worth maybe starting off by finding out a little bit, bit more about Altia. Yeah, Tom. So Altia is a software company. Uh, we make user interface uh, development platform primarily for the auto industry globally. We are headquartered here in uh, Colorado in the U.S. Uh, however, we have subsidiaries uh, headquartered in Tokyo, Japan, Seoul, South Korea, Frankfurt, Germany, um, and of course, a fairly significant office in Detroit. So Altia Design Research Lab has been recently working with the Texas Instrument DLP on an electric truck head-up display. Why is it so important that HUD technology makes its way into heavy goods vehicles? I love this question because I, th I think, first of all, even independent of, of the heavy goods and truck market, if done correctly, you know, I think the HUD is one of the safest ways for a vehicle and its sensors to communicate with the driver. I mean, for obvious reasons, right? It enables the driver to keep their eyes on the road and really see all obstacles moving in front of them without being distracted from the task at hand. Now, <laughs> in contrast to that, big trucks uh, that are moving a lot of goods, they're the most dangerous vehicles on the road, really. I mean, they're heavy weight, their slow stopping length, uh, you know, the excessive volume that they take up on the road, uh, they can create some extremely destructive scenarios. So uh, I think combining the HUD with the truck is, is, is solving one of our bigger problems on the road as it relates to safety and productivity and driver engagement. So if we did nothing in the next several years and, and could outfit all of these heavy trucks with uh, HUDs uh, and then move that into the passenger vehicle space, I think we will have done society a great service. Absolutely. Well, what kind of features does this HUD uh, potentially promote in that case? What really sets it apart from other OEMs' HUDs? Altia specifically, like one, one of the things, when people think of HUDs, they think of this really kind of high-tech, uh, expensive environment and, and hardware, right? You know, so if you were to buy your oculus headset for for example there's there's quite a bit of ar in there and it's it's a very expensive piece of hardware the the issue though with that is because of its impact on safety you really don't want this to be a luxury component or you don't want it to be just for you know high-end vehicles ideally you want it to hit the mass market as quickly as possible okay so one of the things that's unique about how altia approaches kind of all of our graphics and um, user interface design in the car is we require very you know small hardware hardware components right so unlike you know your mobile phone which is hundreds if not thousands of dollars of the hardware uh, in the auto industry uh, we want to skinny all that down into a very cost effective package um, something that maybe doesn't burn a whole lot of wattage especially in electric vehicles and Altia uniquely is taking that high end high fidelity graphics and squeezing it down into the lowest cost package and the lower power draw packages uh, to enable us to get to more of the mass market. Let's say you have um, a trucker or somebody who drives a truck all day um, who's quite passionate about having a low tech solution, who's happy to be able to fix everything in their bare hands. What do you think this HUD brings to the table for them as the driver? <laughs> yeah, you know, this is a really good question and it's kind of similar to some of the the demographics around passenger vehicles as well, right? Uh, the crossover of, of expensive solutions with an older demographic uh, doesn't necessarily equate to high tech as a desirable feature. Um, yeah, for the, for the truck driver, their most important concern is, you know, how do they safely, reliably get from, from you know, point A to point B? And they don't want tech getting in the way. Uh, and, and to be fair, a lot of tech does get in the way. The HUD, however, they're going to see the value of that pretty quickly on as long as we do our job and make that HUD uh, something that is appealing to them. It doesn't take any setup. Uh, and as soon as they sit in that truck and they look out the window and they start driving, they're going to realize pretty quickly, this is going to help me. This is actually going to make my life easier and my, my journey safer 
and they're going to, um, I think, embrace it. So the most important thing is get them in the truck, get them driving in it, and let them see it and experience it so that they can shift and say, yeah, this is one of those tech features that actually is going to help me, um, and I'm all in. So it's really about putting them in the driver's seat and getting the information and the capabilities in front of them and saying, look, this is what we have on offer here. I suppose the on the other side of it is we've got to be very careful that we balance out how much information we're putting in front of the driver at one time. Otherwise, we might even risk overloading them. And how do we balance that need to provide information and not overload at the same time? Yeah, there are some really good user experience um, principles around doing that, not only with the truck driver, um, but broadly in the industry. And, and one of the most important ways to, to enable that is to have a way to selectively reveal features as the driver gets more and more familiar with the system, right? So certainly overloading can totally you know, ruin the soup, right? You just put too many ingredients in there and the thing just tastes awful, right? It's the same with the user interface. There are a couple of key features in terms of lane change, braking distance, and giving you some visibility into obstacles that are coming behind you and on the side of you, especially in a big rig. And, and a lot of truck drivers have seen the value of having a co-pilot over the years. They may have a driver with them who's that second pair of eyes looking around. Well, the industry can't afford that anymore. So the sensors and the display of this on the HUD can become that co-pilot, but again, done very minimalistically in a way that you know the driver feels like they're being helped as opposed to overloaded. And quite honestly, this is where a lot of regulation has to, I think, enter the picture as well. So these governing bodies in different countries and states and regions need to also make sure that that, that windscreen real estate is sacrosanct. It is not like the infotainment system where, hey, it's no holds barred, put on there whatever you want. No, everything that goes on that windscreen has to have a purpose. I suppose as well, HGVs, trucks, um, really serve as a kind of a test bed for wider market application because if OEMs and manufacturers can really see this kind of technology take off with drivers who are on the road for so much of the day, it really uh, kind of demonstrates the feasibility of it, I suppose, for yourselves and for others. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is generally a, a lot of the test bed for the mass market ends up in I'm going to say more commercial and industrial settings right off the bat, right? Because if you can gain, I'm going to say a return on investment in the commercial and the industrial space, like trucks, you can put a number to that and you can measure the data and the safety results of that. And then that after that flows to the mass market because there is some return on investment that's been measured. Well, Mike, uh, I appreciate we're reaching the end of our time. So I'm going to Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been uh, spectacular talking to you. You're welcome, Tom. And, and thanks for the opportunity to talk with you as well and uh, for all the good work you're doing there uh, for us around the world. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please feel free to drop us a like and don't forget to subscribe. Also sign up for AutoVista Group's daily brief email at autovistagroup.com forward slash sign up. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Thank you.